Tomorrow will be dominated by the Chancellor's spending review. We'll be talking about that with Louise in just a moment. But there's another big issue on the agenda after George Osborne's set piece speech, and one which is potentially even more controversial. The government's plans for a second high-speed rail line known as HS2. The plan is to build a new link from London to Manchester and Leeds via Birmingham, the East Midlands and Sheffield. The estimated cost currently runs to £33 billion, or a bit more if a spur to Heathrow is built as well, with the first trains running on the line to Birmingham in 2026. And the whole project completed in 2032. Transport Secretary Patrick McLaughlin is driving forward the plans, but he faces concerted opposition from amongst his own government's backbenches. Several Conservative MPs have been openly hostile to the scheme, including the former Welsh Secretary Cheryl Gillan, Deputy Chief Whip John Randall and prominent backbencher Andrea Leadsom. Well, we can talk now to David Tice from the new Economics Foundation think tank, which recently published a report on high-speed rail, which concluded the money would be better spent on other things. David Tice, welcome to the programme. How have you come to that conclusion? Well, Joe, um, after a long-standing bit of research on HS2, we found there to be three critical issues at play here when looking at the economics of HS2. The first is, is that there is little to no proof that the scheme currently as envisaged will uh, stimulate the broader economy. The second is that it will... Uh, um, it is unlikely to bridge the north-south divide and critically um, as you referenced at the top there are better value for money projects that exist now that can deliver larger benefits to a larger section of the population in a shorter timeline it will make journeys quicker though won't it oh absolutely but that is just one of the um, many the plethora of uh, potential benefits that could be reaped when thinking about an investment of 33 billion pounds, the largest single investment in the transport infrastructure in UK history. And so to, to solely focus on, on one um, uh, criteria, on, on one potential benefit, is um, looking at things um, a little myopically, we would think. Right. I mean, you could argue that the government's going to announce even more money going on infrastructure. Why can't you have both? I mean, tell me some of the things you think it should be spent on. Well, um, when you consider the strategic objectives for High Speed 2, which include these um, economic um, objectives, but also uh, improving transport conditions across the country, evidence suggests, whether it be uh, from international examples, whether it be from long-standing uh, work um, in the research context, all the evidence points to the better bet is to invest locally, where you want to see local growth, regionally, where you want to see regional improvements, and you must take the context into consideration. The UK has a unique geography, a unique mature transport system, and so um, all the findings done by, the, uh, by our organization to date suggest that, that we should be spending strategic money in a more dispersed way. All right, David Tice, thank you very much. Well, with us now is Conservative MP and former Welsh Secretary Cheryl Gillan, whose constituency will be affected by HS2. We've also been joined by the Conservative MP, Stuart Andrew, who co-chairs a group of MPs interested in high-speed rail. Welcome to the Daily Politics. Stuart Andrew, first of all, what is the main argument in favour of HS2? Well, I think the main uh, argument actually is capacity. We are running at a very, you know, both East Coast and West Coast are running very close to full capacity. Uh, I get on the East Coast main line every week, and if you go in peak time, you are standing pretty much all the way to Peterborough. And if we don't deal with this, we are, you know, we are going to be relying on a Victorian system right into the next century, and that's just not acceptable. We've got to come up with an alternative that deals with that capacity, uh, and HS2 is that alternative. Well, Cheryl Gillan, it seems a fairly straightforward solution to what is going to become an increasingly big problem. It's going to become um, a £33 billion pound plus uh, way of solving a, a bit of overcrowding um, on a couple of railway lines. I think the NEF did a very good piece of work showing what the alternative spend could be and how you could get better value for money uh, for the taxpayer out of this. Would it deal with the overcrowding problem? And quite frankly, yes, I think it would, because I think it would bring into effect the upgrading of the East Coast Main Line and the West Coast Main Line, but it would also spread that prosperity uh, to the north by in involving regional transport schemes and getting that connectivity in the north. Because what Stuart is talking about is a railway that's not going to be completed before 2033 at the very least, and it's looking 
taking even longer now there's been so many mistakes on the consultation on the environmental plan uh, it's looking as if this bill tomorrow is just to cover the government to give it some sort of political uh, 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 boost because in fact it's going to take a lot longer than even they anticipated that is the problem isn't it is the completion time we're looking so far into the future and the whole situation both economically and the demands on the transport system may have changed well if we don't start planning now then we're going to be in a really serious problem in about 20 years time and to take up Cheryl's point you know we've been here before mm. we had the upgrading of the West Coast Main Line that took 10 years of long delays billions of pounds and hasn't solved the problem if we're really serious about tackling this huge problem and it's getting worse then we have to come up with a solution now I'm not saying that HS2 is the only thing we should be doing we have to do the regional things and that is happening too right and that's the point the government is committed to a wide variety it says of infrastructure plans why can't 33 billion pounds it sounds like a huge amount of money. it is a huge amount of money but it's going to be spread over many many years and businesses in the Midlands and the North are very much in favour. Well, you don't have to take it from me. You've only got to look at what outside commentators have said. For example, the National Audit Office, which is an independent um, observer of these matters, actually said that the strategic objectives were quite unclear and doubted the ability of the department and HS2 Limited to even deliver this project competently and on time and on cost. So it's not just me that's saying this. I think the government has failed to look properly and constructively at other alternatives. Indeed, I believe in court it's actually said it's going to examine some of the alternatives um, when the hybrid bill comes in later uh, this year. However, the bill tomorrow, I think, is absolutely unnecessary. We didn't have a paving bill for HS1, and we didn't have a paving bill for Crossrail. This is just to give the government some sort of political cover uh, and to tie in Labour. Right. I mean, and politically, you know, you're in constituencies that are affected in different ways, so one might argue you have a vested interest. Looking at it economically, £33 billion... Pounds, it is a lot of money and of course you could spend it on other projects but if you think about what could be bridged if you like in terms of north south in terms of businesses and growth is it money well spent i'm always very skeptical of the economic analysis that points to great benefits because frankly they just know, don't know and uh, as you were saying the national audit office supposedly independent is deeply skeptical of this project at a time when we are heavily indebted, desperately need economic growth, this is a project that £33 billion is still £33 billion. To me, I don't see the economic advantage. You know, we know we have a problem with, uh, with Heathrow. You know, we know we have a problem with the M25. Now, you say you, 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 know, you stand on the train to Peterborough. I commute every day in London. I never not stand. You know, I, I go from Wimbledon to Canary Wharf, it's an hour and a quarter. I am always standing. Absolutely. You know, the idea that you get to sit down, well, travellers in London will tell you there ain't no sitting down in uh, rush hour. But what we're talking about here are long distance trail, uh, train journeys where, where we've got to get our cities better connected. We are seeing Crossrail being built to benefit the south. What we want is some investment that helps us in the north so that we can take advantage. I want my constituents to benefit from the London economy and the wider economy in the way that Cheryl's constituent. And, and we're not able to do that on the current that, East Coast I'm Main Line sure or West Coast. This is going to make any then, difference. Then start it in the north. I guarantee you that I looked at this project and I started off by saying it goes through an area of outstanding natural beauty. It's my constituency. I'm against it. I then looked at it in more detail and I think it's the wrong project. Get your connectivity in the north, Stuart. Start it in the north. But, but until we know where our airport north. capacity is, until but Howard Davis is reported. North and south, isn't but it? also, let me just say, we north. are investing Not for in 20 the north. Years. We're seeing the northern hub being invested with all of the, uh, the rail line between Leeds and Manchester being electrified, new stations being built everywhere. This will complement HS2, not, not just, just be a panacea. Just finally, mm. looking at it politically though, mm. how many of your Conservative colleagues are going to join you in voting against this bill? 
I've no idea. The paving bill is a, is a small bill yes. to try and give the government political cover. But in cover. terms of support, the real the real problem will be um, when it comes to the hybrid bill and the petition process. Um, I think uh, over 30 colleagues have signed uh, the amendment, the reasoned amendment to the paving bill tomorrow, cross party as well. But tomorrow is about the government be able to stand back and say, look, Parliament has supported HS2, therefore we're going to go ahead with it, and to tie in Labour. And it wasn't needed for Crossrail, and it wasn't needed for the Channel Tunnel Rail. Link. This is political cover tomorrow. Well, and, or a slightly uh, more ambitious and, uh, project that actually is going to benefit far more people right across the country. Well, we've got 20 years to talk about it. Or <laughs> 25 <laughs> or 30. But there Absolutely. you go. And at double the cost. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got the final one. <laughs> so, thank you very much to both of you.